Have you ever popped open a can of Pringles and wondered, why do these chips all look exactly the same? Why don't they shatter into crumbs like regular potato chips? And how does every single tube, no matter where in the world you buy it, have that same crunch, that same flavor, that same perfectly curved shape? It almost feels less like food and more like an invention. Today, we're going behind the factory doors of one of the world's largest Pringles plants to uncover the hidden science, engineering, and sheer creativity that make this snack a global icon. What really goes on inside the Pringles factory? Let's find out. Before we dive into the machines and the process, let's rewind a little. Pringles were first created in 1968 in the United States by an engineer named Alexander Lipa, working for Procter & Gamble. His mission was clear, to solve the biggest problems people had with potato chips. Chips would break inside the bag. They'd leave your hands greasy, they'd vary in size and shape, and the packaging wasn't travel friendly. So Alexander came up with an idea that would change snacking forever. A chip that wasn't just sliced potato, but a carefully designed crisp made from a potato-based dough, molded into the same shape every time, and stacked neatly inside a cylinder. People thought it was strange at first, but soon it became one of the world's most recognizable snacks. Today, owned by Kellogg's, Pringles are sold in over 140 countries, with more than 25 official flavors in the U.S. alone and countless limited editions across the globe. But how exactly are these flawless chips made? The journey begins, as you might expect, with the humble potato. But not just any potato. Pringles requires potatoes with very specific qualities. Uniform size, smooth surface, and free from blemishes or diseases. Farmers grow special varieties just for Pringles, and once harvested, giant trucks deliver them straight to the factory. Did you know that Americans consume over 125 pounds of potatoes per person every year? That a lot of spuds and a good portion of those go toward making snacks like these. When the trucks arrive, the potatoes undergo a strict screening process. Workers and machines carefully inspect each batch, discarding any that don't meet the high standards. From there, the potatoes are washed in enormous automatic washers that resemble industrial water towers. Imagine thousands of potatoes tumbling in massive drums, while jets of water blast away every speck of dirt. It's a cleaning process so thorough that by the end, the potatoes gleam, ready for transformation. Next comes peeling. Machines scrape away the potato skins, leaving the flesh behind. The peeled potatoes then move into a special preparation stage where they are chopped, mashed, and blended with water and cornstarch to form a smooth dough. This is where the real innovation happens. Unlike traditional potato chips that are sliced directly from potatoes, Pringles are made from this dough mixture, roughly one-third water and two-thirds potato flakes, with a bit of cornstarch and seasoning. Why? Because using dough allows Pringles to shape every chip identically, ensuring they stack neatly inside the can. The dough is pressed onto conveyor belts, flattened into giant potato sheets, and then rolled out into thin, even layers. Large steel rollers cut these sheets into oval-shaped pieces, each one identical in size. These ovals are carefully lifted and placed in a saddle-shaped molds the same iconic curve that makes Pringles chips look like little potato saddles. That curve is called a hyperbolic paraboloid, a fancy mathematical term. But in simple words, it's a shape that makes the chip strong enough not to break easily, yet thin enough to be crispy. Ever noticed how Pringles don't shatter into random shards like regular chips? That's the magic of this design. Once shaped, the chips move on to the frying stage. They are dunked in scorching hot oil at around 200 degrees Celsius, 392 degrees Fahrenheit for just 11 seconds. It's a quick but intense fry that gives them their signature crunch. Immediately after frying, powerful air blowers whisk away any excess oil, ensuring that each chip is crisp without being greasy. Think about it. Every chip in that can has gone through this exact same process, resulting in a uniform texture and taste. Now comes seasoning, the step that makes each flavor of Pringles irresistible. Unlike bag chips that get tumbled in giant rotating drums, Pringles chips are seasoned on a conveyor belt using a waterfall method. 
A curtain of fine powdered flavoring rains down on the chips as they pass underneath. But here's the twist. Pringles are only seasoned on one side. Why? Because that's all it takes. The chip's thinness ensures the flavor spreads across your tongue with every bite. Some fans even debate the best way to eat them. Season side down or season side up. Which do you prefer? Over the years, Pringles has released more than 318,000 unique flavor combinations worldwide. From classic sour cream and onion, to pizza, barbecue, and cheddar, to wilder international flavors like seaweed in Asia or prawn cocktail in the UK, there's a Pringles for almost every taste bud on the planet. Limited edition runs, like pickle-flavored or even ramen-inspired Pringles, keep fans coming back for more. After seasoning, the chips are cooled slightly and travel down long conveyor belts toward packaging. This is where the iconic tube makes its appearance. Workers and machines align the chips into neat stacks, sliding them gently into cylindrical cardboard tubes with a metal bottom and plastic lid. Every can is designed to protect the chips from crumbling, making Pringles one of the most travel-friendly snacks ever created. In fact, this packaging design is so effective that people often repurpose the cans for storage once they've eaten the chips. But there's another side to the packaging story. While Pringles tubes are convenient, they're also tricky to recycle because they're made from a combination of cardboard, metal, and plastic. Environmentalists have raised concerns, and in response, Kellogg's has begun experimenting with fully recyclable alternatives. Slowly but surely, the company is working toward more sustainable packaging to reduce its environmental impact. Meanwhile, the finished cans are boxed up, stacked on pallets, and loaded onto fleets of trucks. A single factory can mobilize over 100 trucks a day, shipping Pringles to stores around the world. From the factory floor to your local supermarket, it's a journey powered by thousands of workers, advanced machinery, and decades of snack science. Think about the next time you pop open a can of Pringles. Each chip you eat is the result of careful farming, precise engineering, strict quality control, and a packaging design that has stood the test of time. From Alexander Lipa's first experiment in 1968 to the global snack empire we see today, Pringles has transformed the way we think about potato chips. It's not just a snack. It's a symbol of how technology and creativity can turn something ordinary into something extraordinary. So the next time you hear that satisfying pop of the lid, ask yourself, how many chips are in this can? The answer might surprise you. And as you savor that crunch, remember the incredible journey that little chip took to reach you. If you enjoyed this inside look at the Pringles factory and the science behind your favorite snack, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and drop a comment below with your favorite Pringles flavor. Do you prefer classic sour cream and onion, or do you chase the rare limited edition flavors? Let's see what the ultimate Pringles fan base looks like. And of course, subscribe to Captain Discovery for more fascinating journeys inside the world's most amazing factories. Because behind every can of Pringles lies a story of history, science, and innovation. And now, you know the secret.